Okay, this is 11.9 circuit analysis. This is the last part of chapter 11. So here we're just looking at more complex circuits and we're figuring out how to fill in all of the blanks, just like we were doing sort of towards the end of the last lesson. The first problem here, it says circuit analysis when resistance values are given. So when all of your resistance values are given, it's a bit easier to solve the problem. So first we'll look at this one. It says the circuit below has a source voltage of 12 volts and resistance values of R1, R2, and R3. Find values for I source, I1, I2, I3, V1, V2, V3, and R total. Okay, so we can start by sort of writing in our values on the picture. We've got 15 ohms, 25, and 35. I do that just to, to help myself visualize things. And I'm going to say right now there isn't a correct way or a correct order of solving these problems. Okay? What I showed you last time, that's what we're going to do again this time in terms of setting up number one, number two, three, and, and solving it that way. But if you have a different method, that's fine, as long as you get to the same answer. So I'm also going to draw in here 12.0 volts. This is our source voltage. And now I'm going to set up, we've got one, V equals, I equals, and R equals. So I'm going to put all three of those pieces of information for each of these guys. V equals, I equals, R equals. Here's number three. And then we want our total. So we can call this V source. I source. And we can also talk about R total. In this case, it's not the resistance of the source, so we can't say R source, but it's the total resistance of the circuit. So those are sort of our, our last pieces of information. So now I can fill in some blanks here. The source voltage is 12.0 volts. And we were told R1, R2, R3. So R1 is 15.0 is it point oh? Yeah. So we've got three sig figs on all of these. 15.0 ohms. We've got 25.0 here. And we have 35.0 here. All right. So the best first step, if you're given all of the resistances, is to find the total resistance. And we do that using what we learned on the last lesson. Um, so first we're going to need to get a total resistance for these guys. So that's going to be some R parallel. And then we can get the total resistance by adding R parallel to R1. So we're going to do that over here to the right. And I'm going to say here 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And so we can put in our numbers here. This is 1 over 25 plus 1 over 35, which is equal to, um, I mean, you can, you can find the common denominator. It comes out to 12 over 175. And I really do prefer if you can try to keep these as fractions instead of decimal numbers uh, for as long as you can. But it's okay. If, if you wrote a decimal number for that one, that's also fine. So we've got 1 over RP, which means that RP is equal to 175 over 12. And we'll convert that now into a decimal. So 29.583 ohms. And notice I'm keeping a bit of extra digits on that because this is not a final answer. This is just a number that we're going to be using for our next calculations. So that's our RP, and our total is going to be, well, if we look back at our system here, now it's as if we have R1 and RP in series. So when we have series resistances, we can just add them together. We get 15.0 ohms plus 29.583. So our total resistance here is equal to, um, oh, 
I'm sorry, I've been putting the wrong number. 29.583 is the final answer. It's not the answer here. I'm sorry about that. So, um, this is equal to 14.583. So, plus 14.583. And, oh, I'm just going to get rid of that underline there. And so the total there is 29.583. Okay, so over in my total section, I can now fill in that blank. I will do it to the correct significant digits. So we have 29.6 ohms. This is our total resistance. And w that's useful because now we can get the current of the total source. The current of the source, because we have V source, R total, so it's going to be V equals IR, or I is equal to V over R, 12 over 29.583. And this gives us a current at the source of 0 0.4056, or 0 0.406 amps. There we go. So now we have all our information for the source filled out, which makes filling out the rest of this information a fair bit easier. To start out with, we have the current for R1. That needs to be the same as the current of the source, because we're connected in series here, so if our current is going out this way, well, whatever the current was at the source, it can't have changed by the time it gets to R1. So I1 is going to be the same. This is equal to I source which is equal to 0 0.406 amps. And then we can use V equals IR. Oop, v equals IR to get the voltage there. So 0 0.4056 times 15, we get 6.08 volts. So now we've got number one filled out. Excellent. Now, um, the next thing that we can do is we know that number two and number three have the same voltage, these two guys. They're in parallel, so they must have the same voltage, and that voltage adds up with, uh, with V1 to get the total voltage. So here, number two is 12 volts minus um, 6.08, which was V1, and so we get 5.08. 9.2 volts. Excellent. And that means that uh, number 3, it's going to be the same as V2. So this is equal to 5.92 volts as well. Now we can fill out the current for those two. Um, so we have the, the current for resistor 2 here is, well, V equals IR, so we can rearrange that. I is equal to V over R. So this is equal to 5.92 divided by 25. And this gives us 0 0.237. Excellent. We're almost done. We just need to get the current of number 3. So we can do the same thing here. I is equal to V over R. So this is going to be... Um, 5.92 divided by 35 now, and this should give us 0 0.169 amps. Excellent. So there we go. That is um, the full solution to that problem. And you can even do one last check here to make sure that the currents all add up correctly. Notice that current 2 and current 3 should add up to the source current. So we can check that. 0.237 plus 0.169 adds up to 0.406. It does check out, so it looks like we did all, did all of our math correctly. Okay, so that's the full solution there. Um, again, if you have a different approach, that's fine, but I, I recommend structuring it this way with 1, 2, 3 in total so that you're sure that you've gotten all of the different values, and it's just like filling in the puzzle then at that point. So let's take a look at the next page, and we have 
one more circuit, and this one is circuit analysis when only some resistance values are given. So now the circuit below has a V source, I1, V3, V4, and R3. So we don't have, we, we have sort of a mix of values, and we're going to need to fill in the rest of the blanks. So again, it's just like solving a puzzle. We just make sure we list all of our values here. So for number one, we've got V, I, hang on, I'm just going to give a bit more space for these here. So number one, we've got V equals I equals R equals. Do the same thing for two. Four, and our total or our source. So we've got V source, I source, and R total. And we might not really have to get our total unless we're asked for it in the question, but we are asked for it in the question, so it's a good thing we've put it there. Excellent. So, let's fill in the blanks that were given in the problem first. We're told V source is 12 volts. Good. We're told that I1 is 0 0.50 amps. So that means we're also down to two significant digits. V3 is 2.5 volts. V4 is 5.0 volts. And R3 is 10.0 ohms. Okay, there we go. So you can scan this pretty uh, quickly and see things that can be filled in right away. So I can see number 3 here, I can get the current of number 3 right away. So let's just do this, I is equal to V over R. And I can tell that I can get it because when you have two values, you can always get the third one using V equals IR. Okay, good. So I is V over R, 2.5 over 10, so we get 0 0.25 amps. Excellent. Now I'm going to take a look at the picture, see if that gives me anything else. Well, let's see, I've got R3, I3, V3. Um, that right away is going to give me the current for R2, because these two are connected in series. So that means they need to have the same current. Remember, we've got the same electrons running through them at the same speed. If the current through 3 is something, then the current through 2 has to be the same thing. So I can fill in the current here for number 2, 0 0.25 amps. Um, I'm just going to put where we got that from in our statement here as well. So this is equal to I3, which is equal to 0 0.25 amps. Just so it's very obvious where we're getting that value from. Okay, anything else that we can use here? We've got the current one is 0 0.5 amps. Notice that R1 is connected in series with the source. So I can put in the current at the source as well. This is equal to I1 which is 0 0.50 amps. Which means actually I can get my um, total resistance right now as well, because V equals IR. So we can get here R is equal to V over I, 12 over 0 0.50. So I get 24 ohms. So that's my total resistance there. Cool. So, um, we've filled in some, some values now. Let's see what else we can do. So, I think next I want to fill in some voltages. You can see a couple things here. We have, for um, number 4, we have 5.0 volts, and I'm just going to put that on the picture there, so that we can see if there's 5 volts on the bottom, Remember that in a parallel circuit, if there's 5 volts on the bottom, there needs to be 5 volts total in the top as well. So this means the whole top needs to be 5.0 volts. And since we already know how much number 3 is, number 3 is 2.5 volts, 
that means that there needs to be the rest of the two and a half volts going over to R2. Or sorry, to, to V2. So V2 is equal to 5.0 volts minus V3. So that's going to be 2.5 volts. Excellent. Now I can also fill out the resistance then for this guy. So R is equal to V over I. That 2.5 over 0 0.25, which is going to be 2.5 divided by 0 0.25 is equal to 10. 10 ohms. Excellent. So um, let's see. Next thing we can fill in the last piece of voltage here. Number one, well, our source, remember, has 12 volts. And we've said that 5 volts has gone to this parallel circuit, so that means the remaining 7.0 volts needs to be going to R1. So we've got here, this is equal to V source minus V, let's just say V4, because that's the same as the whole voltage in that parallel circuit. So we've got here 12 minus, uh, minus 5, which is 7.0 volts. And now we can fill out the resistance for the first one. This is equal to V over I. 7 over 0 0.5 gives us 14 ohms. Okay, and look at that. We've filled in pretty much all of the puzzle pieces. The only one left is number 4. Um, we're a bit still stuck on number 4. So we can fill in the current for number 4. Because we know that the total current in this parallel circuit needs to be the same as the current at the source or the current in number one so we can see that the current at the source is 0 0.5 amps so we've got, I'll put that in here, 0 0.50 amps which means that R1 has the same 0 0.50 amps we already filled that in and it means that the whole parallel circuit here needs to use 0 0.5 amps as well and we can see that on the top R2 and R4 are getting um, 0 0.25 amps. So that means that we can get the current on the bottom as well. We can get this is equal to I source minus, I'll say I2. It's the same as I3. So I source minus I2, we've got 0 0.5 minus 0 0.25. So we get 0 0.25 amps. And then we can fill in this last piece of information, the resistance. Again, V over I is equal to 5 over 0 0.25, which is 5 times 4, or 20 ohms. There we go. That's the full solution. Again, the order I did it in is not necessarily the correct order. The whole thing, it's like a puzzle. You're just trying to fill in all the blanks however you think you can. Um, there's always going to be something that will lead to the next step. There's always more information you can find. All right, so um, if you aren't sure about that, take another look over it. Try the homework problems. Good luck.